It's Tuesday, September 10th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, Obamacare regulations are eight times longer than the Bible. And David Attenborough drags out tired Malthusian arguments for population control. Then, Dr. McCainlove and his sidekick twist the peace initiative to push for war. All that and more tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. First up tonight, a report out of AFP. US won't wait long for Syria arms plan. The United States is waiting to see a Russian proposal to put Syria's chemical weapons stock under international control, but will not wait for long, top diplomat John Kerry said Tuesday. And Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said while everyone was hopeful the move could be, quote, a real solution to the crisis, he warned the threat of credible, real US military action had to remain on the table. So, of course, Syria has agreed to the Russian plan to relinquish its chemical weapons. They've also agreed to sign the Chemical Weapons Convention in the last few hours. Uh, Putin, of course, has called on the US to withdraw their threat of military action for all of this to go ahead. And there's also a UN mandate being proposed by Britain and France. But was this whole process started by a gaffe made by John Kerry during his speech in London yesterday morning? which he's now, by the way, trying to walk back and say the whole thing was his idea to begin with, or, as InfoWars is asking in an article that I put together earlier today, is Assad being tricked into sacrificing Syria? Is President Bashar al-Assad being tricked into creating circumstances that will hand the Obama White House a justification for war, or is the plan for serious chemical weapons to be destroyed a geopolitical masterstroke that will avert a regional conflict. So let's break this down, okay? Obama's case for attacking Syria, as we know, has completely fallen flat on its face. He's going to lose the congressional vote, even if it happens. So Kerry comes out with this apparent gaffe, which he's saying now he planned all along about Assad disarming. Russia seizes upon it. Everybody then praises Putin and Lavrov as geniuses, Peace Prize nominees. And, of course, this now gives Obama the chance to back down from the whole war rhetoric while maintaining his supposed credibility. But here's the fear. Both Saddam Hussein and Colonel Gaddafi were given insurances that they would not be attacked if they relinquished their weapons of mass destruction. And we all know what then happened to Iraq and Libya. So is this a ruse to disarm Syria before launching an even bigger attack later down the line? Is it a ruse to insert hundreds of weapons inspectors into the country, infiltrated with spies to destabilize Assad's government? Is it a ruse to get Congress to authorize what they would otherwise have rejected by making it seem more reasonable? They were going to reject immediate airstrikes on Syria. All the whip counts showed that that would happen. But how about authorizing military action if Syria fails to disarm within, say, six months? Sounds more reasonable. Then the administration could claim that Syria hasn't disarmed, that there's a delay in the process, that they're not committed to the action. They could claim they failed to adhere to, to a UN mandate and at that point, they'll have already secured the congressional authorization, which otherwise seems impossible. So this disarmament process could be part of a larger strategy to create a pretext for military intervention that Obama currently doesn't have. It could be used to back Assad into a corner out of which he cannot escape. Those are some of the fears being expressed in the lights of this chemical weapons proposal. And in a related story, McCain and Graham seize on peace initiative to push war. Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham have seized upon a potential path to peace, Syria giving up its chemical weapons, and managed to turn it into an avenue for war. Listen to what they said. Today's development should make members of Congress more willing to vote yes, McCain and Graham said in a joint statement. This will give the president additional leverage to press Russia and Syria to make good on their proposal to take the weapons of mass destruction out of Assad's hands. So 
as I just described, to rescue a congressional vote that seems doomed to failure, McCain and Graham, who of course have been pushing for this attack from the very start, are trying to exploit this development to put pressure on Congress, not only to authorize the airstrikes, but as we've documented it, which is in the actual resolution that Obama put forth, an open-ended war throughout the region. They're not going to get that done. They're not going to get the green light without making that resolution they put to Congress seem more reasonable. So they're going to say, if Syria disarms, if it doesn't disarm, this is what happens. It's more palatable to Congress, makes it more likely to pass, and potentially gives the Obama administration an opportunity later on down the line to say, well, they failed to adhere to this stipulation, these terms, they failed to adhere to a UN mandate. That means now we can attack. But judging by some of the testimony today out of John Kerry and Harry Reid, you know, Obama could just still stick the proverbial middle finger up to both Russia and Congress and go ahead with the attack anyway. I mean, their, ins their insanity has come this far. Why not push it over the edge with maybe the aid of another convenient chemical weapons incident? It's all still very much a possibility that they could ignore Congress, they could ignore this whole Russian proposal and go ahead with the attack. Anyway, moving on to other news now. Global warming computer models collapse. Arctic ice sheets rapidly expand as planet plunges into global cooling. This is Mike Adams, naturalnews.com. For years, we've all heard that global warming is threatening our planet, but now in a stunning turnaround, world scientists are warning that an era of global cooling seems to be upon us, complete with extraordinary expansions of ocean ice being recorded in just the past year. It turns out that global warming predictions were little more than doom and gloom fear-mongering based on failed computer models. And in this article, Adams highlights mainstream media reports from 2007 out of BBC News, which said that the Arctic would be, quote, ice-free by the summer of 2013. What actually happened? Well, last summer, since last summer, we've seen over one million square miles of new sea ice formed in the Arctic. It's an increase of 60%. And you can see that from the satellite imagery in this article. So again, man-made global warming has been discredited. Overpopulation fear-mongering has been discredited, but they're still kind of failing forward. They're still pushing it, which leads on to our next story out of the Daily Mail. It's irresponsible to have big families. Sir David Attenborough warns overpopulation could mean the end for human evolution. Sir David Attenborough has suggested it is irresponsible to have a large family in today's overcrowded world. He even appeared, bearing in mind he's got two children, to voice support for China's brutal one-child policy, saying the country had recognized it would have too many mouths to feed if it did not impose restrictions on family size. OK, so we've got three points here. One, China's population boom was caused by Chairman Mao telling females to be warrior moms and have 10 kids for the communist military machine. It was a, an artificially created problem in the first place. And the fact that Attenborough is advocating a policy, which, as we've reported, is enforced through forced abortions and female baby infanticides, which is, you know, of course, in China has caused this terrible population imbalance, is completely despicable. It's par for the course with Attenborough, though, because, you know, we've heard this rhetoric from him before. But two, the UN's own population figures show that global population peaks at 9 billion in about 2050. It crashes after that. And in fact, the future problem that we're going to face is rapid depopulation, which is why countries like Russia are begging their citizens to have children. And three, you know, even if you believe this propaganda, why is Attenborough and the like lecturing Westerners about not having kids? You know, indigenous Western populations are having less children than ever before. I was at a uh, wildlife park a couple of weeks ago now watching a, a cheetah display, and they were talking about how they, as, a, as an organization, as a business for protecting endangered species, were working with Attenborough and the, the Optimum Population Trust, of which he is a patron, to brainwash British kids into not having children of their own. 
in order to save the cheaters. Now, how many wild cheaters are there in Britain to save? Zero. So why are they brainwashing British children to not have kids when it has absolutely nothing to do with it? You know, a, a British kid's chopping down rainforest in South America. Are they destroying the habitats of pandas in China? No, that's the work of giant corporations tied in with governments who are often also allied to these phony environmental organizations. So they blame us. Just like global warming, overpopulation is a form of neo-eugenics. The solutions that they offer have nothing to do with saving the cheaters or saving the earth. It's everything to do with lowering our living standards, taking away our freedom and ushering in their pre-planned, plannedopolis agenda of the post-industrial revolution, which they've talked about on many occasions, and overpopulation, fear-mongering is another key integral part of that agenda. Moving on now, CNS News reports, Obamacare regulations are eight times longer than the Bible. Obamacare regulations add up to 10,516 pages in the Federal Register, or more than eight times as many pages as there are in the Gutenberg Bible. And it says that the final Obamacare regulations published so far amount to approximately, get this, 10 million 516,000 words. So again, this is coming to the forefront. We've got Senators Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, of course, leading the charge to defund Obamacare. But again, the establishment Republicans have refused to join them. And even though people like Boner and Cantor are offering tacit support, they're being booed off the stage at events because their actions just have no teeth. They're designed to fail. And this is the part of it's, it's all about conservatives slowly coming to the realization that they need to get these rhinos out of office, these Republican in name only, get more people in like Rand Paul and Justin Amash before we even begin to see anything other than a, a one party monopoly, which continually, whether it be war, you know, Obamacare, taxes, global warming legislation, continually closes ranks on the key issues while posing as being two competing factions. And finally, would you volunteer to go to Mars if it meant never returning to the Earth? Well, that's what a uh, Dutch company is offering. Bas Lansdorp, a Dutch engineer and entrepreneur, plans to establish a permanent base on Mars in a mission he, he hopes will take off in 2022 if he can find the necessary $6.49 billion. One in four of the 202,000 applicants for the one-way trip are Americans, says Mars One, a nonprofit group which initiated the hunt for would-be Mars settlers back in April. If they survive the trip, the human Martians will have to deal with temperatures of minus 55 degrees Celsius in a desert-like atmosphere that consists mainly of carbon dioxide. They will also have to be consent to being observed back on Earth full-time as stars of a reality TV show that would help cover expenses. And it's a fascinating philosophical conundrum, isn't it? Would you swap your entire life, your home planet even, to become one of the first humans on Mars and take your place in history? Well, the crazier things get here on Earth with World War III still looming in our future, I can definitely see why it would appeal to some. And we're going to go to a report by Dan Bidondi on the anniversary of 9-11, which, of course, is coming up tomorrow, and a special event related to that. Here's Dan Bidondi. Hi, Dan Bidondi here. And tomorrow is 9-11, and this is a special news bulletin. Can we see a possible false flag attack? We had Senator Lindsey Graham warning everybody in the South Carolina area about the possible nuclear strike, and they tie it right into the Syria as uh, we have U.S. prepares to move troops into the Middle East, and they're preparing for war. And that was an article by Kurt Nimmo. And, you know, we see all this coming into play. Now we see the U.S. Marines are moving closer to Libya as 9-11 anniversary approaches. And they keep warning us, 9-11, 9-11, 9-11. Look what happened last year. We had Libya. And how many false flags have we had in the past 10 years alone? 
And um, again, can we see a big false flag tomorrow, folks? I mean, I hope and pray to God I'm wrong, but you know, they might stage another false flag just to get public support to go into Libya. Now, however, I'm welcoming anybody in the Northeast area, that's New England area, to join me tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm hosting the biggest 9-11 and false flag awareness rally in New England. And it's gonna be 1 p.m. in front of the State House in Providence, Rhode Island, right in front of Kennedy Plaza. So anybody's welcome to come, bring signs, bring whatever you want. Just bring yourself mainly, come out and support it. We got over 100 people so far uh, confirmed coming. And uh, for event information, go to truthradioshow.com, then click on the 9-11 Awareness Rally event banner. Again, truthradioshow.com, and come out and join us. And we'll, our goal is to get the public aware of false flags, not just 9-11, but we're focusing on 9-11 because it is 9-11, but about Benghazi, about past false flag events. And we need to get public aware of this because we can see another false flag unfold, as we've seen in the recent past with the chemical warfare in Syria. And, you know, we got um, Obama and um, John McCain and all these uh, globalists hell-bent on going to Libya. And uh, so we need to make the public aware about false flags, and we need to put a stop to this. And again, it's truthradioshow.com. Click on the 9-11 Truth Awareness event. And this is Dan Bedondi reporting. That's going to wrap it up for the news, but stay tuned because after the break, David Knight talks to filmmaker Telly Blackwood about having his channel reinstated on YouTube. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Don't go away. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com, the clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go back favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Are we choosing our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? As we've moved through history, every great leader has had to understand the potential of information. Billions of dollars have been spent privately and publicly looking at how to tap into your psyche. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. When somebody obscures that feedback loop between you observing and testing it out and verifying it, they can take total control of your awareness. All of this is happening so fast, you need to be ahead of the game. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would not only endorse, but demand a war. Right oh, there's now. another one, another plane just hit. State of mind, because there's a war on for your mind. Get your copy of State of Mind, the movie at InfoWars.com. And remember, every order at InfoWarsStore.com receives a free citizen rule book. Well, tonight we're gonna to talk to one of the entrants into the Operation Paul Revere contest. Telly Blackwood had the video, George Washington's Revenge, and I'm sure you probably saw it. It had over a half million views, and it got a lot of mainstream attention. It also got the attention of Michael Moore, who tweeted about it and criticized him and attacked him. And somebody, somebody, and we're going to talk to him about this tonight, managed to get his entire off-the-hook TV account taken off of YouTube without explanation. Well, we've got an update on that. He's going to tell us what's happened. That's been restored, and an apology has been put out now after several months of having his entire channel deleted with millions of views. Welcome, guys. We want to get an update as to what's going on with Off the Hook TV and 
being ta having your channel taken down by Google because of some bogus complaints. Tell us what you just learned just a couple of days ago. Well, David, I was just kind of going through my email. And I saw an email from YouTube stating that um, we, on second review of your channel, we um, did not find your channel to be in terms of service, and we will be unsuspending your account immediately. Wow. Wow. Now, tell us uh, what you found out in terms of who had filed complaints and the nature of the complaints and that sort of thing. Well, I didn't get any names from them at all, but um, I was told that multiple people have programs where they can preload hundreds and maybe even thousands of YouTube dummy accounts, which can be used to flag accounts and to generate views. And unfortunately, um, George Washington's Revenge received over a thousand flags within a 24 hour period, immediately knocking it off the grid. Wow. But um, he had also hadn't told me that they had received two other complaints as well, legal complaints, as per some complaints from some government offices as well. But yeah, would, in the would, email that you sent me, you said they, na they named three government offices. They said it was three government offices, but they didn't name them as well as two private individuals, correct? Yes. Wow. That, it really got people's anger, even though it was just a parody video. That's what's amazing about it. But you had a lot of views. You had over a half million views. Tell us about your channel. You had how many subscribers, how many views on your channel, and how many years was it up? Um, it's been up since um, 2000, I want to say 2005, 2006. Um, we've generated close to 10 million views, and we are probably around 10,000 subscribers about now. Wow. Um, and George Washington's revenge video I thought it was 500-something when it went offline, but now it's back online, it has over 800,000 views on it Really? Well. Wow. Yeah, because the last thing we saw just before they took it down, it was just over 500,000. Well, what are you going to do with that now? Are you going to continue Off the Hook TV, or what, what's your plans to do? I'm still going to have a little bit of fun with it. Um, my original plan was to pass the company down to my sons and some other um, older members of the crew as well to operate and I was going to move on the documentaries and films and kind of move on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, it certainly had a big impact and I guess the thing for everybody to be concerned about is to see just how easy it is to lose your information off of Google. We've seen many cases where people have had a bogus complaint against them and they had data files that were stored on the cloud but in your or have their entire business shut down like you did with Google and YouTube. Yeah, it's insane, and they can just take it all away from you and just push up a button. Well, you haven't stood still, even though this has been gone now for several months. How, how long has it been? Has it been three or four months now that they took it down? Oh, yeah. Seven yeah. Months. So in that interim, you've been busy. Uh, you're an entrepreneur. You're not going to stay down. So you, you've got a couple other things in the fire right now. You've got a couple of Indiegogo campaigns that you've just started, a couple of ideas. One of them is an application. Tell us about that. Um, the Freedom Genie application is an idea to create safety for people. For instance, let's say you get pulled over by a police officer and you're getting harassed. He's not following the book. You can simply turn this app on and it'll actually stream the video live of the whole incident to where the cop can't grab your phone and break it or turn it off. All the evidence is live up to a server and also can be set to notify your attorney, your family, your friends, your loved ones that you're being detained and be able to tell what kind of incident you're in. That's what I like about it is the fact that it ties together a whole bunch of different things. You know, we tell people when they get pulled over, one of your most effective ways to protect yourself is to record the incident. You know, the police are recording the incidents, but when it's something that's not favorable to them, often those recordings just kind of disappear. So there's ways that you can do that. You can send it to Ustream or some of the other streaming accounts and you can have it automatically saved, but with your app, it's going to do a lot of other things, isn't it? It's going to notify people. It's going to record a lot of information. It's, uh, tell, tell us about um, what you're, where, where you are in this development process. Well, we, we have the ideas, the designs, and everything. Um, just the funding to actually create the app is actually expensive. So I have created the Indiegogo campaign to help raise money to create the app. Um, some features will vary between Android and Apple. But um, with the funding from everybody who wants to help protect themselves with this can actually help us fund to create this program. That's right. We've seen uh, kind of a network of people set up in 
one or two towns in New Hampshire. There's something that they're trying to start here in Austin that's uh, already underway where people get together cooperatively and do that. But this is a more ambitious project. This would cover a lot of people. So I can easily see people coming together to fund this kind of startup. Tell us about the other project that you've got going. That's the one that Phil's here to talk about as well, right? The documentary? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> um, Prescription for Murder is a documentary um, we came up with to expose the FDA and the pharmaceutical companies for suppressing a uh, cure for cancer. Um, it's been suppressed since the 1970s, and we have got together here to build a virtual murder case against the FDA and the pharmaceutical companies. Well, that's very important work. Now, Phil, you worked with Tully on Off the Hook TV, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, Worked with them on a couple of different small projects for it, as well as the uh, George Washington's Revenge Lawn, which you mentioned earlier. Okay. And so, what are you doing in this documentary? Are you, you're working as uh, producer, just, as director, as editor? What, what's your role in this? Uh, all of the above. We pretty much came up with the concept together. Um, and I just, you know, I thought if, if, if somebody's stopping or suppressing a cure of something that could potentially save millions of lives, that's not just murder, that's mass and, and the fact that it's premeditated for profit is uh it, it made me want to vomit most of the uh things we're talking about is a doctor in Tes in texas excuse me named uh brzezinski mm -hmm. there's already a documentary in place about him and his work but um you know it's just you have to think about how big it is a lot of people maybe just brush it over or, or think it's you know quackery or, or some type of herbal medication but it's not uh, there's scientific basis. He's in phase three of FDA um, trials right now. So, I mean, herbal medication doesn't get that far, and crap doesn't get that far. It's, it's a real cure. He's got a far greater success rate than conventional medications, especially chemotherapy, which is a poison itself. Right. And uh, it's just absolutely disgusting that, that a, an entity at all, whether it be government or... Um, whatever, a corporation. Whatever. It's, so, it's so annoying to see the government take these decisions out of our hands. I mean, it goes not only to what kind of medicine we use, and, and we're talking about patients who are terminal. So why shouldn't they be allowed to make those decisions for themselves? Exactly. And the, the, the harsh thing about the reality of this is a lot of people are forced to go through chemos and all these poisonous remedies that by the time you're able to get to a, a cure or treatment that might cure you and most of the time when you get cured by it, you're going to die from all the poisons that they, they made you go through first before you can seek alternative treatment that's right it can compromise your immune system or damage your body in ways that these other treatments can't overcome we see this type of thing even to the extent of the food that we eat having SWAT teams come down on farmers having SWAT teams come down on uh, dairymen who have raw milk and it's something that really gets people's attention when you start talking about the medical issues and there's two sides of this they're forcing things on us like vaccines as well as keeping terminal patients from trying things that they believe would be in their best interest it seems to me like they would at least allow the data points allow people to make those decisions for themselves and then they could have the data points that if it didn't work then people would know that absolutely the, the fact that you have to be um, considered, you know, uh, uh, what are the, basically what are they called, terminal. I mean, you, no hope, chance for you to even be able to get considered to be part of uh, Brzezinski's trial right now by the FDA and be treated legally is kind of disgusting. I mean, you have to go through all the chemo, go through any surgery they recommend, and if still there's no chance and you're just not going to make it, then, oh yeah, then you can try this guy. Mm. And he still saves some of them, but I mean, by then you have children mainly that um, have been so affected by the chemotherapy that literally their brains melt. Mm. I mean, that's how toxic the medication is. That's the conventional way to treat this disease. And it's the number one killer in the United States. I mean, we're talking about the millions upon millions, 20 million deaths probably or more, conservatively speaking, in the last 20 years from cancer in the U.S. alone. I mean, that's a Holocaust proportion right there. Those are big, big numbers. I think eventually we're going to go back and look at these days or the people, the generations that come after us will go back and look at chemotherapy and the treatments that we have for cancer in the same way that we go back and look at doctors treating people with leeches and bleeding them out or giving them massive doses of mercury like they did George Washington that killed him. 
Well, you've got a couple of great projects going. You've got uh, both this documentary that can educate people and save lives, as well as this app, which can pull together a lot of information to help people if they're pulled over to traffic stop and run this thing without waiting for trouble to start. It's kind of a preventive. It's kind of a prophylactic. I think those are a couple of great ideas. And uh, so tell us again what those two projects are. Give us the name of that and the Indiegogo project. Um, the documentary is called Prescription for Murder. And it's a totally nonprofit film, and the film will be free to the public for download when it's done. Oh, so, wow. So we're passionate enough and have a belief in this to where we're not going to charge. We just want people to see it. Um, no charge. We don't really think a cure should be charged either, but that's out of our hands. But um, everybody should be at least know that this exists. Well, that's great. That's a different way to do it. So you get your money up front with the Indiegogo, and then it would be put out for free. It will be a free project. Great. And then tell us about the app. How is that going to tell us about the Indiegogo campaign with that? How do people participate in that? Yeah, the Freedom, the Freedom Genie app is um, on Indiegogo. And once again, that's the app to help protect you at illegal checkpoints, DUIs, border inspections, anything to where you can stream the event live and actually be able to have your phone automatically text, email, and notify your families and lawyers in case you are being detained by law enforcement or any other kind of official. Yeah, and as you point out on your Indiegogo app page, we have the highest incarceration rate in the world. Actually, the highest absolute numbers, even though we have we're in competition with other people like the communist Chinese and they have a much larger population base we have even more people in terms of absolute numbers and it's not just people that are out there drunk driving they have these border stops within 100 miles of the border they consider that now to be a constitution free zone so the only way that we can do that is to basically keep an eye on them and then the last thing tell us again what you think you're going to do with off the hook TV are you going to continue running that it's still going to be up in operations. We'll still be going. Um, a few skits in mind. <laughs> and we have a few skits and funny videos in mind. Um, Good. We might, we might be having our younger generations and the siblings go ahead and take it from here and see where it can go. Um, That's great. I'm really excited to make a difference in the world now and actually expose things that will make a difference. So I'm not saying I'm done with the funny videos or anything, but I think for now I'm just going to let it be and have a little fun with it once in a while. Mm -hmm. and just on focus on something you know very take it, important. take it more serious yeah you've got two serious directions you're moving well you've done a great job and uh, you did an amazing job of promoting the video and getting views it, it really it went viral you had Michael Moore tweeting about it you really you really got under his skin and that's that's something to be proud of uh, <laughs> maybe in Piers Morgan I don't know maybe they were the two individuals that called I don't know <laughs> but best of luck to you Telly and you too, Phil, and I hope these new Indiegogo campaigns work out for you. You've done a great job, and they're very important. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, we certainly wish Telly the best on his new endeavors. Consider going to his Indiegogo campaigns and supporting him. Those are serious endeavors that he's involved in, trying to help people understand what's going on with cancer, as well as the Freedom Genie app on Indiegogo. Well, while Telly is producing a documentary, we already have a documentary available that talks about uh, treatments from medical marijuana and how those are being suppressed by the FDA and by the DEA. American Drug War II tells the story of medical marijuana, not only the alleviation of symptoms and the help with nausea and the effects of chemotherapy, but also its curative effects. And that's available exclusively from InfoWarsStore.com. That's it for tonight. Join us every weeknight at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.